for any given reaction, we can write the rate is K times the concentration of each reactant raised to some power. So uh, we'll just do X. Say there's reactant B, we'll raise it to the Y. Say there's reactant C, we'll raise it to the Z power. X, Y, and Z are the order. X is the order with respect to A. B is the order with respect to B. And C, a Z, sorry, X, a Y is the order with respect to B. Z is the order with respect to C. X plus Y plus Z equals the overall order of the reaction. Uh, to find units, uh, the units of K will always differ. The order is always going to have the same units, nothing. So you know units for the order. But K will always differ. So to find the units of K, basically solve for it. It's the rate divided by each of the concentrations. Usually, the rate is in a concentration per ton. And then, usually, each of these are in a concentration unit. So, you just need to find out what's the total concentration on the bottom. It, it's related to the overall order. So, if the overall order is 6, this would be concentration to the sixth power. <coughs> and you basically just remove one concentration from the top. If the overall order is one, then you'd have concentration to the first power here, and your rate constant concentrations would cancel, so it would be one over time. So when you're finding the order for the rate law, what you're going to have is a table that I'll have an experiment, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera, listed here. It'll have each of your reactants, say there's A, B, and C, uh, with a molarity values for each experiment that there is. In this case, three. There could be 10 experiments, whatever. And then your rate will be listed for each, usually a molarity or concentration per time. So you always follow the same procedure. First, you look for any two of the experiments where the concentration does not change. Once you find a place where uh, the concentration Once you find a place where the concentration doesn't change, and you have to do that for x, for y, for z or for A, B, and C. You, for each case, you need to find places where the concentration doesn't change. Once you do that, then uh, you take a ratio of the rates. Uh, and basically, for there's going to be some number, say, to the x. And you'll reduce that to solve for x. So you'll have, be left with one unknown. In this case, where there's one, two, three, uh, two, two of these three have to have the same concentration on two lines. So that they both cancel out, and you're only left with one x point. Uh, once you do that, so you find x, y, z, etc. Once you do that, you find k. And k, you just pick one experiment, whichever one you want to do with the same answer for each, because K is not going to change over the given reaction. So you just pick one experiment, you plug in all the numbers for it, and K will be your only unknown after you have found X, Y, and Z. There's your overall concept. Is that good? Okay, now let's do an example.